Good evening everyone and welcome to another of our midweek studies on our Discovery Bible Study. This week we're looking at Genesis chapter 6, just a few verses, verses 5 to verses 8 uh, in Genesis and yet in these few verses they tell us a lot. Let's read them together. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination and the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind, whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground, and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favour in the eyes of the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for this message to us. May your Holy Spirit come now and speak to our hearts, encourage us, explain your word to us and help us to be able to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I encourage you to take a moment or two in your group together. Uh, spending time sharing with one another, finding out how your week has been, uh, if you are in a group, and uh, spending time then asking yourselves, discussing among yourselves these questions. What is this passage saying about God, about his plan? What is it saying about people? Is there something in this passage that applies to me? And then who can I share it with? in this in coming week. So take some time now to read over the passage again and uh, go over those discussion questions. Well what does this short passage have to tell us about ourselves as people and about our gracious God? Well first we see about people when God looked that man, he saw how great the wickedness on the earth had become. It was uh, one of the points of Calvin Calvinism, talked about total depravity. The fact that every part of man has been affected by sin. In uh, history's times, people have argued many times that, that people can pull themselves up by their bootstrings. People can, if they try hard enough, work hard enough, do their best, they can avoid sin, they can improve, they can live a life pleasing to God. And really the argument uh, put by, by Calvin and his followers to say that man cannot in every part of him uh, that is tainted by sin. It's not that people are completely evil, there are good in everyone because we are all created in the image of God. And yet, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? How great man's wickedness on the earth had become. This was only 1,500 years after Adam and Eve had been created. And in that time, how great the wickedness had become. One sin leads to another and another. And God says he saw that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was evil, not occasionally, but all the time. C.K. Chesterton is reportedly to have answered uh, an article in the Times which said, what's wrong with the world? And he wrote, dear sirs, in answer to your question, I am. We are the thing that's wrong with the world because human beings, each of us, tainted filled with sin, selfishness, pride, even our best actions. Oftentimes there's a selfish motive behind them. So what is wrong with the world? God noticed. Uh, and then we find out uh, about God. What are we told about God? We 
thing God saw. Nothing's hidden from God. God sees what's going on. God knows what's happening in the world. God isn't oblivious to the goings on, even the things that are hidden. God saw. God knows. God not only sees what's visible, he sees into human hearts. And God's heart is not untouched. Look what it says about God's heart. It says the Lord was grieved. Sin grieves God. Your sin, my sin grieves God. Wickedness, it says his heart was filled with pain. When God sees needless death and suffering, how is God affected by a pandemic such as this one? Grieves his heart, fills his heart with pain. Understand that when we suffer, God suffers. When there is pain in the world, when there is uh, racial inequality, when there is slavery still happening in the world today, when we see brutal killings and uh, also we see human natural tragedies, God's heart breaks. When families lose a loved one, loved one God's heart breaks. And God's response, we find that because of the wickedness of people, he actually regretted, uh, it says here, his actions. It pained him to such a degree that uh, for a moment, for a moment, God considered uh, destroying everything, wiping out all human beings, all animal kind as well, just starting maybe from scratch over again. And notice the consequences, man's evil, how it also affects uh, all the animals, all of creation. The whole world is affected by human actions, human sin. The last little uh, point in this uh, short passage, we're told there, but Noah found favour in the eyes of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful that even though uh, God's heart was grieved by sin, God saw complete wickedness. Uh, and it doesn't mean here that Noah was perfect. He was not the one exception to the world. But God saw uh, that in, in Noah's heart there was a, a, a love for God. There was a desire to obey him, a desire to serve him. But uh, God only turned with favour upon Noah. Noah found favour. We're not told at this point about Noah's actions, but that he found favour with God. And God still looks upon people with favour. And so there's a thread running through the Old Testament story. From the last day we looked at Genesis and we're told that even in the midst of the disappointment of sin, that God promised one day a descendant of Eve would crush the serpent. So we move to the next and we find even though there's continual wickedness and sin has continued to develop uh, into this chapter 6. But God says there he poured out his favour on one man. We're going to see that later on. God pouring out favour again on Abraham and then promising to his family. And uh, eventually we find through the Old Testament favour was poured out on one person then to the nation of Israel. But it was leading forward, leading forward to the time when Jesus would come. And when Jesus, we're told in Luke 4, uh, when Jesus stood up to preach in the synagogue, he read from the prophet Isaiah. And he read saying, the spirit of the Lord, sovereign Lord is upon me. He has appointed me to preach good news to the poor. Proclaim liberty of the captives. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. The year, not just one year, not just the three years that Jesus lived. We are in fact still living in that period of grace and favour of the Lord. That's why our calendar is divided. BC, the previous before Christ, and AD or Christian era, the time of Christ's coming. And then from the time of Christ's coming till today and until his second coming, we are living in the year favour. So just as Noah found favour in the eyes of the Lord, so that despite 
human weakness, despite human sin, that we can find favour of God. Jesus paid the price and when we trust in him, we can have a heart transplant. That's the promise that Jesus gives, that everyone who trusts in him, his Holy Spirit will come and live in us. He will give us a new heart and a new spirit so that we can live to please God. Again, it doesn't mean that we are perfect all the time or always do what is right. But because our heart has been changed, therefore God continues to look upon us with favour. So this passage is a passage of sadness and disappointment as it speaks about human failure that is widespread and complete. But it also looks in hope, not because of us, but because of God's favour. God's favour that he pours out upon us today in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that despite man's wickedness, that man's every inclination of his heart being evil, yet you looked upon us with favour. You looked upon Noah with favour. You sent your son Jesus so that today we live in the year of the Lord's favour. And we pray that you will continue to pour out your favour upon us, that men and women may seek and may find the Lord Jesus Christ as, his, as their Lord and Saviour and may have that heart transplant so that we can live pleasing you and obeying your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening and spending time and studying God's word together. I look forward to us meeting again next week.
mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall to